What's up, guys? It's Coach Gaglione here. It's another edition of our Stage Ready series. And at the time of this taping, I'm about four weeks out, four weeks to go uh, before reaching my ultimate goal, a goal I set five years in the making. Pretty cool. I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And for context, uh, if this is your first time listening, I'm Coach Gaglione. I'm the owner of Gaglione Strength, and I've been involved with powerlifting and strength coaching for over 14 years. Um, the only known man to squat 800 pounds equipped in six different weight classes. I've been as heavy as 340 pounds, and I had an all-time low-end weigh-in of uh, 204 and change uh, this week, so very, very happy about that. My weight's been fluctuating between 205 and 210, and I'm looking to be stage ready. I'm looking to do compete at my first bodybuilding show on August 1st in Teaneck, New Jersey. So this was a really uh, critical week for me because uh, I made the decision to kind of cut out any heavy compound barbell movements from my training in order to kind of reduce injury risk, but also because uh, I feel like I can get a better contraction with some other kind of devices uh, and tools. So I elected to kind of cut out the barbells. If you listened to our episode last week, I uh, kind of went over some of my strength markers and I felt really good about what I was able to achieve. But now as I dive deeper and deeper into the final phase of the diet, I did not want to risk injury uh, as I'm not Ronnie Coleman. I'm not going to try to deadlift 800 pounds in a, in a deficit or squat 800 pounds while in a really big deficit or while I'm trying to be as lean as possible. So a couple of changes that I've made to the program just to kind of give some context. So like instead of kind of traditional barbell flat benching or, you know, I've been using the duffalo bar bench, you know, I've just been kind of using either dumbbells or center mass bells, which are a really cool tool. Uh, ours are from Rogue. Uh, this was an, uh, first invented and thought up by Donnie Thompson, but essentially uh, the center of mass is closer to the joint, so it's a really comfortable. I love these things. Uh, I think these could potentially replace dumbbells, uh, and the only reason that we, you know, I have I've had dumbbells for a long time. Otherwise, I'd probably use these guys exclusively. Um, I'd say there's almost you know nothing that feels better. It definitely feels better in your joints, your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders. These feel amazing. And then if you want to do any rotational exercises, you don't have to kind of deal with the inertia of like the swinging bell that's kind of out in front of the, on the sides of your joint. So center mass bells are a great tool that I've been using a lot as far as that's been like our free weight of choice uh, during the bodybuilding prep. And now that I'm not using as many, as many barbells, uh, I've been using those quite a bit. So I've been kind of going from more straight bars to more, you know, free weights, dumbbells, center mass bells, and kettlebells. I've also been, you know, adding in more band and cable work. And also just some different exercises to kind of help mimic some of the posing positions that I'm going to be doing on stage, kind of more sports specific, if you will. So I can, and, and just adding more posing in. I uh, try to hit a couple of poses at the end of each workout when I'm a little bit tired. And my thought is if I could hit those poses while I'm tired, while I'm fatigued, and uh, set my body, position my body in a good way that's only going to help uh, come game day. So I mentioned before going from like a barbell bench press to a dumbbell or center mass bell and also adding things in like push-ups and band flies as well. Uh, going from like a barbell squat or a safety squat, bar squat, uh, to more belt squatting. Uh, we're using Matt Wenning's belt squat exclusively right now as well as a banded leg press, So, uh, which I first uh, kind of learned from a stand at the Rhino Efforting. So... Had some great stuff with Stan, and I think uh, I think really Stan had it right as far as uh, having dedicated hypertrophy phases where he kind of took the load off his spine. So using things like the belt squat and the banded leg press has been able I've been able to kind of keep size on my legs, uh, but also take uh, pressure off my back, which has been great. Uh, haven't been doing too many hack squats, but that's been something I've been playing with a little bit more, more partials, and you know doing things like band terminal knee extensions and leg extensions and leg curls and things like that as well for my legs. Uh, in terms of deadlift substitutions, I'm not doing any conventional deadlifts anymore. I'm not doing any sumo deadlifts anymore. Um, not doing any really deadlifts with a barbell. Uh, I am using a T bell for like a Ukrainian deadlift, which is kind of like a deficit stiff legged deadlift. I've been doing good mornings, uh, more, more exclusively on the mat winning belt squat. And I've been doing things like glute ham raises and 45 degree back extensions, as well as glute bridges and hip thrusts. So the barbell hip thrusts, I'm going kind of light on. So that is one barbell movement that I am keeping in. Uh, in terms of overhead pressing, I kind of tested out a landmine for the first time. Uh, it was okay. The jury's still out on it. Um, I think I'm going to go back to just using dumbbells for that. Uh, the landmine press is... Um, 
more of a, a kind of almost like a standing or kneeling kind of incline deal, but I feel like I just prefer to incline and overhead press with dumbbells. Uh, there are some inherent benefits from a health standpoint, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a great hypertrophy move. Uh, personally, I, I will probably, you know, play with it here and there, but not something maybe I might just kind of come back to at a later date. It's also a little bit cumbersome to set up, but I have been using the, also the landmine for, um, with a trap bar specifically for kind of a T-bar row type exercise. And that I feel is really great because as uh, you mechanically get weaker, uh, the weight and the load gets closer to your center of mass. So it kind of matches the strength curve for the row. So I really like the Tia bar row uh, for but that I was reason. Like experimenting with some different, instead of using like straight bar pull-ups, I've been kind of using different handles uh, as well, um, different grips to kind of alleviate, alleviate some stress on the elbows. Um, these are definitely a little bit harder if you ever try to do like ring pull-ups and things like that. But it's one of the reasons why we're also using a lot of the prime handles. Uh, it just kind of allows you to spread our bar and like the, uh, the, the, the long bar uh, with those, you know, patented handles, you know, these, uh, the rotator handles, they kind of allow you to accommodate your body a little bit more. Um, you know, so really good examples of obviously using a, like a longer tricep rope versus a short tricep rope or like a straight bar. The straight bar is going to be fixed, so it's going to give you more stability, but it's not going to allow your kind of shoulder joint to go through a full range of motion, uh, like, and spread the, you know, when you're doing like a tricep extension, for example. So that's where a lot of those prime handles really come into play and why a lot of this special equipment can be very beneficial. So straight bar is great for kind of building strength, uh, but not always necessarily the most joint friendly um, and not always. And, and the benefit also of a straight bar is that you can incrementally load it, micro load it, uh, which is great. So uh, there are some inherent benefits to a straight bar. And I think in terms of kind of building absolute strength, uh, barbells and specialty bars are going to be king there. Uh, but in terms of, you know, specific hypertrophy and isolation and really kind of respecting your joint integrity, you know, using more bands and cables uh, that are not kind of fixed is going to be a great idea when loading is not a concern, as much of a concern and more activation and kind of joint health uh, might be a concern. So especially during a peaking phase of my bodybuilding prep, um, not a peaking phase for powerlifting, but a peaking phase for, a, for a hypertrophy, the end of a hypertrophy cycle. Um, end of a bodybuilding prep, I think these are going to be really good tools to kind of keep you healthy uh, and allow for the best results possible. Um, yeah, and just and kind of going when when we are using straight bars for kind of curls and uh, you know maybe um, overhead tricep extensions and things like that, I've been kind of opting for more fat bars because there's going to be a, a little bigger uh, surface area. It's going to be a little bit less joint stress. Uh, so I've been kind of using fat, you know, adding fat grips to different dumbbells, adding a fat hand, you know, using fat bars. Uh, axle bars for things like curls um, and different exercises, uh, just a little bit more joint friendly. So even if you are using a fixed bar, a, a fat bar can be a really good option for you uh, as well. Just uh, not just a novel stimulus, but also just to kind of have the inherent benefit. It also forces you to squeeze a little bit harder. So that's going to also potentially uh, give you a harder contraction. So this was a particularly important week for me. Um, because I thought it was my best posing practice, my best posing session. Uh, we kind of ironed out some details. Um, we kind of changed our ab and thigh position uh, over, I think, a week or two ago. We also changed my kind of leg setting, how I set my legs, and my legs look a lot more symmetrical with the new stance. Um, so I didn't realize there was as much of an art to bodybuilding as there are, and I didn't know there was as much technique involved with posing and kind of presenting yourself than there is. Uh, so that's been a learning process. Um, one of my goals, I'm trying to highlight my strengths. Uh, so I feel like my back thickness is a strength. I feel like um, my legs are uh, look amazing. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's like, oh, who would have thought you squat like 900 pounds and then, you know, you get lean and you have these big legs. You know, having that kind of loading uh, throughout my career uh, has really kind of, I think, set my legs apart. And I think that's going to be my biggest advantage uh, going into the show, especially as a novice uh, bodybuilder. I, I believe that my legs are going to look the best on stage. So I'm going to definitely try to do my best to highlight my strength and highlight my strong point, which is going to be my legs. Some things that we're doing in terms of opposing, we're going to try to, you know, I do have some, you know, some loose skin and things like that. So we're trying to kind of work around that. Um, I don't personally care about it, but I know that's something that judges are going to look at. So we're trying to present ourselves in a way where the loose skin is not as apparent and we could highlight my strengths. We could highlight, uh, so even though that I do have a lot of definition in my abs, you know, presenting them in a way, uh, working on my breathing techniques, my, you know, drawing in 
Uh, that's another thing that's been really interesting is that a lot of the things that I've been doing in bodybuilding are opposite of what I've done for 14 years in powerlifting. So in powerlifting, we're often t- told to tuck our, you know, pinch our shoulders down and back. And in bodybuilding, we need to kind of spread our scapula apart to get the width. Uh, in powerlifting, we want to keep our big toe rooted to the floor. And a lot of times I'm pulling my toe off the ground to kind of engage some of the muscles in the lower leg and, you know, make my legs, present my legs in a certain way. So, you know, that's something different. Um, drawing in versus bracing and pushing out. We're always told to, you know, push your belly into the belt. And in bodybuilding, we want to get as skinny as possible. In powerlifting, we want to get as fat as possible for stability. Uh, but in, in, in bodybuilding, we want to have that, you know, that small waist to make our, our, our back and our legs look bigger. That kind of, you know, we want to have that illusion of like kind of the X frame. Um, and so we want to present ourselves in a way by drawing the abdominals in. So that's opposite as well. So it's still a brace, but it's just a different, you know, drawing in versus pushing out is completely different. Um, you know, how you gain stability uh, for like a thousand pound squat is, you know, you're really kind of trying to push your obliques out into the belt. You're trying to push your lower back into the belt, you know, in, in, in bodybuilding, you're trying to flatten out your lower back to make your upper back look that much bigger and show some of the, you know, the definition in your, in your entire back area. So a lot of these things are different. Um, they're opposite. So um, I have to kind of, you know, change my brain and realize that this is a different sport. It's a different skill. And I didn't realize how much of a skill component there is to bodybuilding. And I have a lot more respect for uh, the actual competition part of it. Again, I don't know. Uh, I'm not familiar with the judging as much uh, as, as my coach Sean Cody is, but I would imagine that the presentation makes a difference. And you want to look like a professional out there, just like I give the advice, you know, when you go to a powerlifting meet, you want to know the rules. You want to kind of show the judges that you kind of know what you're doing. You want to show the judges that you're prepared. And I believe, uh, you know, I will look like I'm prepared uh, when I get on the bodybuilding stage. So the last, uh, you know, this was really cool because the last, you know, seven, you know, the last 10 minutes or so of posing practice, we kind of went through kind of a mock meet, if you will, uh, you know, just kind of a mock, uh, you know, posing routine. So we started off with, you know, our front relax position and we went through all the relaxed poses. So we went through the front relax, uh, which is kind of, and then, you know, our side relax, uh, and then you kept doing a quarter turns to your back relax position and then back to the side. So that's just kind of presenting your general physique. Uh, and that's also kind of how you transition from pose to poses going to, into those relaxed positions to my understanding. Uh, and then from there, we go back to the front relax once again, and then we're going to do a front, we did a front double biceps pose. Uh, that is one thing I'm trying to really work on is get the bicep peak to come out. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of things like with, uh, you know, supining my arms a little bit more when I, when I do my curls, doing more drag curls and things like that uh, to kind of get that bicep peak to come out. I do believe my shoulders have really come in nicely uh, because that was certainly a weak point with just some of my, my injury history. So I'm very, very uh, excited that I feel like my shoulders uh, and my chest are becoming like also a strong point that can kind of, uh, you know, complement my legs. Uh, so I think just getting the bicep to come out a little bit more uh, and to kind of have my bicep uh, thickness and size to match my tricep, uh, I think that'll be something that I'll be working on moving forward. Even when I'm powerlifting, I definitely want to uh, start to include a little bit more bicep training in so I could transition back to bodybuilding if I ever want to do a show within the next couple of years again. So after the front double bicep, do a front uh, lat spread, uh, which is the front lat spread in particular has been very challenging for me because I don't have a lot of internal rotation in my shoulders. Uh, from there, t- t- quarter turn to the side relax, and then I did the side chest, which it's looking good. Um, it's looking a lot better. I think, again, my chest is getting a lot more striations in it. It's getting a lot more width. Um, and then from there, uh, we, ha- we came up with this nice side tricep pose because uh, I don't have a, a, the ability really to get my arms behind my back very well. So this has been a really cool way to present my triceps uh, to the judges. So that's been something interesting that's been looking good. Uh, and then from there, um, from the side poses, quarter turns to the back, uh, to the back relaxed position. And I do believe that um, when my when things are going well, the back will also serve me well uh, because you can't really, you know, the loose skin is not as apparent. I think my glutes and hamstrings are coming in nicely and then my back is very thick from, you know, deadlifting for, you know, with a straight bar for over 14 years. And then from there, the back double biceps, the back lat spread, and then back to a quarter turn to the front. And then this is something different. We uh, did a new kind of ab and thigh. Um, 
because again, sometimes it's really hard for me to get my abs to kind of come out in this position. So uh, this will also highlight my legs a little bit more. So I'm excited to practice that from now until the show. And then I believe once, uh, when, you know, this was also, a, we played with this a couple of times. Uh, we went from a closed hand position to an open hand position uh, with the fist closed. Uh, I should say a clasped position to a closed fist position for the most muscular. And I believe that this has worked really well. So um, this was really cool. Um, it's been, I thought this was a really kind of pivotal week for me. I feel like I'm very close to the finish line. Again, it's been a goal. It's been five years in the making. I also want to highlight that my weight has been really kind of steady. Uh, between 205 and 210, I have not really – the scale has not moved too much, but I really feel like I've made a lot of progress in terms of how I look uh, physique-wise. So I think that's important. I think things like an in-body, things like uh, measuring your waist, measuring your body parts, I think these are good. And, and pictures, of course, which is more subjective, but – that's something to consider when you're trying to measure physique progress. Um, I think the scale is fine, especially if you're very, very overweight. I think the scale is definitely something you need to do. Um, you know, I'm weighing myself every day right now. In the past, I would just weigh myself once a week. But I think you need to definitely um, monitor your weight, whether you're a power lifter or you're just trying to be healthy. Um, I think it's important. Um, I don't think BMI is the most important thing, especially if you're carrying a lot of muscle. But I think a lot of big guys... I think they overestimate uh, how much muscle they have and they underestimate how much fat they have. That's what I've kind of learned in my experience as someone who's, um, you know, from like an in-body kind of measurement, uh, I'm probably around like 11, 12% right now. Um, and I was heavy, at my heaviest, I was over 40% body fat, which is very, very unhealthy. Um, so I'm very, very happy about that. I also do want to say that this is as much as this has been a physical journey, this has been more of a mental, emotional, and spiritual journey. And I want to kind of showcase it's more about the building the discipline, building the skills necessary. Uh, it's not about having a six pack. It's really not. This to me is a, is, a, is a mental challenge. I also want to show people what's possible because my genetics are definitely not uh, designed to be a lean person. I'm not designed to be kind of a skinny or a thin uh, kind of person for any means, but I do believe that we are capable of a lot more than you think, and I want to kind of inspire others to do great things. I want to inspire others to be healthier, to be strong, to be fit, and I also want to show a lot of those big power lifters you can have a good, if you're, you know, if you're chasing an all-time world record like Larry Wheels, that's fine. I think that, yeah, you're going to have to, if you want to be, if you want to compete um, at that highest level, you are going to sacrifice some health especially when you're peaking for a contest. But I do believe for 99% of the people that are listening to this uh, that you can have a great combination of strength and health, uh, performance and aesthetics, and, um, and just have a healthy, strong body. Um, I don't think it has to be all or nothing. I do believe powerlifting and lifting should be part of your life, but it should not be the only thing. I think that you should be able to experience other things. And uh, I'm hope that, I hope, my hope is that I'm showcasing that and I'm showing people that you can have more of a balance. I, I don't think you can have ever true balance, but I think more of a balance. I think striving for balance is a good thing um, in terms of how you feel. Because, you know, for me, um, I kind of made this post and I think, uh, I, I truly believe it's m the most important thing is how you feel about yourself internally. Um, your external appearance is one thing. Now, the thing is, you can be... I think you could be happy and a little chubbier, uh, but you are always gonna you're gonna feel better at a certain kind of range. And I think there's a point where I'm gonna get really lean, and I'm not gonna feel as good about myself. I'm not gonna feel as physically good because I'm gonna be so depleted. So I think there is a sweet spot there, and I think that if we can kind of strive to kind of be there most of the time, maybe not all the time, because maybe sometimes we want to be a little leaner uh, just for whatever reason, and sometimes we might be a little fluffier because maybe for performance reasons. But I think if we can kind of live in that happy place, um, we will be happy with ourselves physically, we'll be happy with ourselves mentally, and I think we'll be able to accomplish a lot more in the long run. And if we have our health in mind, and you're around longer, I think you can do more. Um, so that is my hope with this whole Stage Ready series, that is my hope with showcasing this transformation for you all. Um, so thank you guys for listening. If this uh, helped you, please share it. Uh, please check out the links if you want to support our program uh, for the future of uh, more content creation. If this was a value to you, you could also give our page a five-star review on iTunes, on Google, and uh, Facebook, and any other place you could find our business page. Every little bit helps. helps spread the message of strength. So thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, stay strong, and I'll see you soon.